to provide another significant piece of information related to the Muskrat Falls project. And it's one of the uh, most important issues to the rate payers in the province, and that is the question of rates. Uh, as you probably remember, this started over a year ago with the, the mantra that power rates will, will double, and that went on for quite some period of time, uh, had the effect of in, instilling fear and uh, providing inaccurate information to the public. So one of the things that we looked at was how can we provide accurate information uh, utilizing the resources that we had at our disposal, including the, uh, the personnel in my department and the, uh, the experts at NELCOR. We started to put together uh, rate charts and then essentially updated them when the Decision Gate 3 numbers uh, came out. So the discussion paper that we're releasing today, and I think this would be the second of approximately six or seven discussion papers that will come out of the Department of Natural Resources, is entitled Electric Electricity Rates Forecasting, Muskrat Falls Will Stabilize Rates for Customers. It outlines our government's position that Muskrat Falls will result in lower and stabilized electricity rates for the long term compared to the isolated island option being Holyrood. Historically, Newfoundland and Labrador residents have paid less than the Canadian average for their electricity. And jurisdictions with the lowest rates, including uh, Manitoba, BC, and Quebec, have typically have large hydro uh, generation. If you look at the chart there, that shows you the, the most up-to-date chart we have showing where we are in the province. You'll see that the uh, rates that, La that Labrador pays compared to where we are right now, with Quebec, Manitoba, and BC being ahead. That 12.6, and uh, I'm sure Ed will uh, I can clarify if any issues arise, is an all-in cost of, uh, of power to the people of this province. If the island residential customers remain dependent on oil-fired generation currently used at the Holyrood uh, station, then the cost of power will be much higher over the long term. And I want to just go back and show you a chart over the last couple of years, a uh, number of years, and show you how rates were rising without people uh, apparently noticing, or at least not uh, uh, drawing public attention. If you look at this particular chart here, what you will see is that between uh, 2001 and 2011, rates went up $45 a month, or 32%. And uh, in between 2011 and 2016, they projected to rise an additional 16%, or $30. The 2000 and 2011 uh, numbers are based on actual data, so they're, they're accurate, and we have uh, the numbers projected to 2011, 2016. So what you're seeing is rates are going, have gone up, are going up, and will continue to go up substantially if we don't do something. But the reason this, if you look at it, is really fairly obvious as to why rates are going up, is because of the price of oil. Holyrood is currently used at approximately 15 to 25 percent average uh, in terms of providing the, the island's electricity. As you are uh, all, all aware, since 2004, we've had the mill closures, which resulted in approximately 182 megawatts of power going back into the system, and approximately 40 percent of that has been used, and the, we expect that the rest will be uh, utilized by uh, the end of 2014. So Holyrood had to be used less. As demand continues to, to grow, then Holyrood will be used more, which means that we will burn more oil, up to 18,000 barrels of oil a day. Again, if you do the math, it's quite simple. In, 19, uh, in 2011, fuel costs, when Holyrood was used approximately 15 to 25 percent of the time, was 135 million. It's projected in 2017, it will cost 324 million dollars for oil at, uh, at Holyrood. We are basing these estimates on, uh, on forecasts by uh, international energy experts, uh, Pyra Energy Group out of, uh, out of New York that the cost of fuel to run Holyrood between 2017 and 2067 will be $6 billion. The Pyra report, which is also released today, uh, outlines uh, that between 2012, 2025, it's expected that oil will average, uh, I think it's 105 to $110 a barrel, around, around that range. Uh, and the Pyra price has become important because in the MHI sensitivity analysis, they also use the Pyra high, Pyra low, Pyra base, Pyra expected. So we've reduced, released this report here, the PIRA update. They also filed a report for us at the PUB to indicate how they go about their projecting, uh, how they reach their uh, 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 numbers, and the issues that affect supply and demand. So my oil will stay, according to them, above $100 a barrel, and that's, uh, that's consistent with other 
expert predictions. So now what we tried to do is show people of the province how you compare Muskrat Falls uh, to Holyrood. We have approximately uh, 230,000, I think it might be 236 or 238,000 ratepayers in the, in the island portion of the province. There's a 90,000 of these people, profile one, who don't use uh, electricity, or excuse me, don't use electric heat, use electricity. Uh, we have 140,000 who use electric, electric heat also. And so what we did, one burns about 775 kilowatt hours, the second burns approximately 2,050 kilowatt hours. So we average that out to get the 1,500, I think it's 1,517, is it? Uh, profile three, 1,517 kilowatt hours. Now, what we're trying to do here is illustrate the ranges in which people uh, uh, will find themselves in terms of what you will pay. Uh, the rate calculator developed by uh, uh, the people at Nalcor will actually allow you to go in and look at your actual rates. And it's been tested, as I understand, to these charts, and it, it amounts in 2017 to that 15.2 cents that I talked about last week. So to try to illustrate today, we we'll take profile three. You look at the, uh, the rates, you will see that in 2000, excuse me, yeah, I had a, where are we there? 2011, we go from uh, 100 and, 184. 184 to uh, 214. And then in, without Muskrat Falls, we go from 229 to 296, or an $82 increase. With Muskrat Falls, we go from 231 to 252, or an 18% increase. So you do remember the power rates will double. What we, what we can say accurately today is that increases in power rates will double without Muskrat Falls. So when we look ahead, the question becomes, well, what, what should we do? I believe that the answer is clear, as I've stated over the last uh, period of months, but especially the last week or two, and that the time is right to develop muskrat falls. And I just ask you to ask yourselves this question. What makes more sense, to give $6 billion to foreign oil companies or to build a hydroelectric resource that will provide revenue and value to the people of our province for 100 years? Our government firmly believes that Muskrat Falls is the least cost option to supply reliable electricity for ratepayers on the island. And what we're trying to do today is provide comfort to, to seniors out there, to uh, single mothers, to everyone, that although your rates will increase, they will stabilize. And that without Muskrat Falls, we will continue to be dependent upon the volatility of fossil fuel prices and that your rates will go higher. So at the end of the day, we suggest that Muskrat Falls is a better project for all of these reasons and that it will stabilize our electricity rates. You may ask why we put it in writing. Well, as I've said a number of times, and I think Ashley, I was there yesterday. Why did we, I've said it to you, Dave. Why do we put it in writing? Because we said it, and people don't believe us. So here it's in writing. Go test us. Show us where we're wrong. And basically, to the people of the province, not the critics, to the people of the province, we have the confidence to put these numbers in writing to try to help you understand muskrat falls. Ed. Well, well thank you, Minister. As the Minister has mentioned, Muskrat Falls is the lowest cost option to meet our energy requirements and will help keep rates for electricity consumers amongst the lowest in Canada. Hydroelectric projects have a long life with low operating and maintenance costs that benefit electricity consumers uh, across many generations. The benefits of clean renewable hydropower can be seen in other provinces with low st stable electricity rates such as British Columbia, Manitoba and Quebec. These three provinces currently have the lowest electricity rates in Canada. We can look to our own backyard for examples of how investments in hydroelectric developments are benefiting, are benefiting rate payers today. Bay to Spare, which was built over 40 years ago, is a great example of a hydro facility that has been paid off and as a result is providing very low cost electricity for consumers. This is one of the reasons why our rates remain competitive throughout the country. Areas, areas with higher reliance on fossil fuels for generation have a tendency to also pay higher electricity costs. Hydro generation is a good investment for ratepayers in this province. We understand how important electricity costs are to customers. Our focus has been to determine a path forward that provides the lowest rates for consumers, and Muskrat Falls, with a link to the island, 
will curb the volatility and growth we see in electricity rates today and ensure our rates are stable well into the future. We have heard from our customers that they wanted a way to see what the impact would be directly on their electricity bills with and without Muskrat Falls. In response, Nelcor has developed an easy tool for consumers to see what their bills are projected to be with Muskrat Falls versus what they'd be if we remained isolated and dependent on the Holy Road Generating Station. Understanding and projecting rates is regular business for Newfoundland and Labrador Hydro. The data is sound and the calculator is a projection of what the bills will be under both scenarios. The data is derived from the same information which has been used for all other calculations around decision gate three. The forecasts for bills include all generation, transmission, and distribution related costs such as operation and maintenance fuels, power purchases, and all of the subsets of these costs, including the, 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 the flow along costs from Newfoundland power at the distribution level. Over time, electricity rates are forecast to be lower with Muskrat Falls in service than with the Holyrood Isolated Island alternative. As a result, naturally, people's electricity bills are also expected to be lower. While the development of Muskrat Falls will help keep rates lower for electricity consumers, there are other ways people can save on their household electricity bills, and that is through energy conservation or monitoring and controlling their consumption. Together with Newfoundland Power, Newfoundland and Labrador Hydro provides rebates and information to assist homes and businesses in their efforts to save energy and money on their bills. Through our joint utility program, Take Charge, customers can receive money back for energy windows, insulation upgrades, and program programmable thermostats. These are very important tools to help our customers save on their monthly bills. We encourage all customers to call your utility or visit our joint website at www.takechargenl.ca to get more information on these programs and rebates. In closing, Muskrat Falls and the Labrador Island Link is the lowest cost option for consumers, and if we continue relying on oil, consumers will pay much more for electricity in the long term, a risk that we can avoid by moving to clean, renewable generation. Thank you.